Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, I'm Sarah Shaffin. It's lovely to welcome you here for this very special evening and this very special screening of One Fine Morning from the International Booker Prize and Mubi in partnership with Foils and the Garden Cinema. Uh, we're really lucky to be hearing from author Georgi Gospodinov and translator Angela Rodel, winners of this year's International Booker Prize for Time Shelter as of as of Tuesday night. So <laughs> um, if you enjoy One Fine Morning, I think you'll really love Time Shelter. The pair share themes of memory, loss, language and the pain of modern life. Um, so to tell us a bit more about the book, I'm going to introduce Georgi and Angela properly. Georgi is the most translated and internationally awarded Bulgarian writer to emerge after the fall of communism. His novels, poems, essays, screenplays and graphic novels has, have established him as one of the leading voices of European literature. His novels have been shortlisted for more than a dozen international prizes and Time Shelter is his third novel to be trans published into English. Originally from Minnesota in the United States, Angela holds degrees from Yale and UCLA and has received NEA and Penn translation grants, as well as working as a literary translator and teaching literary translation in Bulgaria. She's also been a singer in a Bulgarian folk band, acted in a Bulgarian crime drama and starred in a film in which she rides a goat. Maybe we'll hear about that later. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll just remain a mystery. <laughs> but welcome both of you and thank you for being here and congratulations as well. Um, let's rewind though. Um, Georgi, could you start by telling us where Time Shelter began for you, where the idea came from? Uh, okay, I will start in English and then I can switch in Bulgarian because my Bulgarian is better. I promise. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, the idea came maybe 20 years ago and it it came in the way that uh, you can find into the novel. I really found a small newspaper for homeless people in Vienna and I read a small article about uh, the idea that the old songs, old smells uh, can unlock the memories of the people who are suffering from Alzheimer and uh, dementia. And then I thought, okay, it's a very good idea. What about if we build a clinic for the past? And anyway, 20 years later, in 2016, mm, I decided to come back to this idea, but in a different, with a different approach. And it was connected, of course, with some political uh, events, you know, better than me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, Brexit was one of the inspiration <laughs> of <laughs> this novel. Also Trump and also all this political, all this sense of anxiety that something wrong is happening into the time mechanism. I mean, uh, the past, the flood of past is something that you could, you could feel. And uh, yeah, this this was shortly. Uh, I I started to write it in 2017, 18, 19. I spent one year in New York Public Library. Uh, I get a fellowship there, and uh, so the library was really important also for the novel. And uh, the novel was finished in 2019. Then happened. Then in 2020, it was published exactly in the first day of lockdown in Bulgaria. So all bookshops were closed, uh, yeah, and uh, people ordered the book uh, via ordinary post. So it was a really dystopian situation for a dystopian novel. We were sitting in the home, locked <laughs> into the homes, and books travels. Books are traveling, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, and you mentioned when you sort of revisited the idea in 2016, there were some political uh, things going on that I guess influenced the story. Can you talk a little bit about exploring time and exploring the nostalgia for the past that has come from sort of certain political wings um, across Europe and, and the US and perhaps even further as well, this idea that the past was so great? <laughs> Uh, now, now in Bulgarian. Uh, I wanted to explore the time in different 
So uh, in the book, I wanted to study both memory and the past uh, from different levels. I didn't want it only on the p- political level. That would have been too too за, narrow. За мен uh, личното, персоналното, личния подход е uh, винаги по-важен. Мисля, че за всеки писател така. Дава повече повече усещане за времето, отколкото политическото и така нататък. For me, the personal is always the most important. Uh, I think for every writer that's the case. It, 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 it is more important than the political. It gives the, the, the real story. Така че основният въпрос беше какво се случва с човек, когато започне да губи паметта си и когато започне да губи усещането си за бъдеще. So the, the big question was what happens to a person when they start to lose their past and their memory and also when they start to lose their sense of future. И паралелно с това какво се случва с едно общество, което започва да развива колективен Алцхаймер, социален Алцхаймер. And in parallel with that, what happens to a society that's starting to develop collective Alzheimer's? Защото ние наистина се намираме в някакъв memory gap сега. Because we really find ourselves in some kind of a memory gap right now. Цялото нова поколение, което помнише, помни войната от първо лице, постепенно си отива. That whole generation that remembered World War II from, uh, from in a first person is, is, is um, dying out. А живата памет, устната памет е нещо много важно в се предава, тя се предава по по-различен начин, отколкото нещо, което трябва да прочетеш книга. Living memory and oral memory is something very different than, than what you read in a book. It is transferred, that kind of memory is transferred in, in a different way. И в романа разглеждам паметта и времето и като, и през, като физическо явление, като историческо явление, като лично явление. And in the, the novel, I explore memory and the past as, as a physical phenomenon, as a personal phenomenon, and also as a historical phenomenon. И докато писах, се консултирах с много uh, невролози и хора специалисти по паметта. And while I was writing, I actually consulted with a lot of uh, uh, neurologists and people that were specialists in memory. Но също така и с специалисти теолози. But also with theologians. Защото в, ако си припомните, всъщност апокалипсиса края на Библията. Апокалипсиса не е просто край на а, пространствен край. Апокалипсиса е края на времето. Because if you recall at the end of the Bible, the apocalypse, it's not only the end of the physical world, the spatial world, but it's also the end of time. Но края на времето в смисъл на затваряне на, на, на времето. But the end of time in, in the sense of like coming full circle of uh, closing the circle of time. Всички времена ще се смесят в едно. All, all times will mix together in one. Някак си имам усещането, че днес живеем в точно такова смесване на всички времена в едно. And now I have the sense that right now we're living in that, that time, that, that mixing of all times into one. Включително няма да подмина и войната на Русия в Украина. Including, I, I won't avoid the topic of the, the war, uh, Russia's war in Ukraine. Това е битка за миналото. Това е опит да се влезе в, към времето на Втората световна. This is a, a war about the past. It's an attempt to go back to enter into that time from the Second World War. The последно това беше аз съм като човек аз съм силно носталгичен, обичам миналото. As a person I'm I'm personally very nostalgic. I love the past. И затова тази книга не беше лесна за мен. So this wasn't an easy book for me to write. Защото тя трябваше да да се раздели с тази носталгия до някъде. Because I had to separate myself or, or sort of step away from that nostalgia to a certain extent. Да покажа, че миналото може да бъде дискретно чудовище. And to, to show that the past can be a discreet monster. Thank you for that. I mean, one, one of the ways in which you explore um, you explore time and memory in the novel is, is obviously through language. This is partially a book about language, how we talk about the past, how we talk about our present, how changing one word can change meaning. Um, how did you want to play with language and text in the book? For me, the language is very important in itself. The language is a shelter, the language is a time machine. For me, language is very important that 
play with language is very important for me. Time is a uh, language is a shelter. Exactly. Когато описваш 60-те, ти трябва да влезеш в физика на 60-те, в сленга, в жаргона на 60-те. So when I'm describing the 1960s, you have to get into the 1960s, the slang, the jargon of that time. Така че много внимавах там да слагам тези думи, защото една дума, която дойде от 1960-те години, тя е като мадлената на прус, тя веднага събужда определен тип памет. So uh, I had to be very careful when I was writing those patches to use the right words. So a word that comes to the 1960s is like Proust's Madeleines. It actually unlocks that time, that period in time. Uh, това, аз идвам uh, преди да пиша романи. Uh, за мен поезията беше много важна. Пишех поезия, продължавам да пиша поезия. Така че идвам от поезията. So I come from poetry. Before writing novels, I uh, wrote poetry. I still write poetry. So the, the, the language is very important. Изобщо поезията е много добра работилница. Много, да. Poetry is a good workshop uh, for, for writing. И обичам романи, които са написани с внимание към изречението и към всяка дума. Защото има и друг тип романи. I, I personally like novels that, are, that pay attention to, to every word and every phrase. Of course, there are other kinds of novels. Този тип романи, написани през езика, трудно стават за Netflix филми, блокбастери. The type of uh, novels uh, that are written through language and for language are very difficult to turn into blockbuster uh, <laughs> films, <laughs> Netflix films. Но на мен това ми харесва. But I, but I like those books. Mm. Well, we can, we can hope, though. Um, and Angela, for you, how, how do you go about translating something that does play with language and that is very specific in some ways? And obviously, you're, you're not, your job isn't just a word-for-word word translation. You're looking to also translate meaning and emotion within, within your work. Yeah, I think especially, um, as Georgi said, having come from poetry, I think that's where that that tension is the most obvious between the form and the content. But in Georgi's writing, even his prose is so uh, saturated with sounding, with rhythm, and it's really important, uh, even in prose passages, to get that 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 sounding. I think he make, he's so, and in terms of the Bulgarian writers I've worked with, he's probably the most, pays the most attention to craft on the line level. And so I, as the translator, also feel like I need to pay a lot of attention to the, the structure of the of the sentence of the paragraph of the episode and make sure that it has a certain sounding and I think I would like to think that my my past as a musician helps because I think there is a definite musicality to his writing um that that I really wanted to keep and and, and felt obligated to try to reproduce to, to the best of my abilities and this book isn't the first time you've worked together what is your relationship as author and translator like how what sort of collaboration is there between you i translated gori's previous novel physics of sorrow and quite a few short stories essays uh i haven't really touched the poetry because <laughs> i think maybe poets should translate poetry but um and even an opera libretto a space opera so <laughs> so it's and i think i'm in a really privileged position um in terms of translators because you know we live in the same town and and Georgi is just incredibly generous with his time and his brilliant mind and so anytime i have a <laughs> a question i can say hey yuri let's go get a beer or a coffee and we can sit and we can talk about the text and he's very involved in the translation of the text we always have conversations around solutions and so i think i'm i'm very privileged in that respect i don't think a lot of um translators have such incredible access to to their authors um the other thing to mention around language is of course that time shelter is the first novel originally in Bulgarian, to win the International Booker. I wondered if you could talk um, a little bit about what you hope that might do for Bulgarian literature more widely in its place in European literature, in, in world literature. I mean... I I, bel- I mean it's incredible. It's the first Bulgarian book that ever even made the long list, and the fact that it made the long list and the short list, <laughs> and then one was really I mean astonishing. And uh, I truly believe that you know the tide lifts all boats. I I, I think there's a sense that oh now the Gyuri's won it, it'll never you know an- another Bulgarian author will never. But I think the opposite is true. I think now Bulgaria is really establishing itself as a place to go for really interesting, really creative, really fresh literature, and and that's been my experience in the past that you know. 
Georgi for maybe the past 10 years has been, uh, I'd say, putting Bulgaria on the map a little rarely. And it's been much easier for me as a translator to approach a, a magazine and say, hey, and they're, oh, yeah, Bulgaria. Yeah, that's Georgi. You know, I think that the, this is really opening doors to, um, to, the, to the world literary stage for, for all Bulgarian authors, not just Georgi. Yeah, I think it's really encouraging, you know, not only for Bulgarian authors, but for the writers in the region. I mean, on the Balkans and so on, because you always have this feeling there that your literature is a bit underestimated and so on. Uh, but yeah, I think it will be very, very encouraging. It will open slightly the door to, to our, lit uh, our literature. And this is important. I think in Bulgaria we have good tradition in short stories, also in poetry, uh, because we had a strong oral stories tradition, and uh, yeah, we, we we have really really good short storytellers, but even novel writers now. Very good novel writers. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about. Um, your relationship both of you to to film so time shelter is in a lot of ways a very visual novel like the, mm -hmm. it's very detailed because the clinic needs to to focus on detail to get everything quite right i wonder um are you a very visual writer are you picturing everything as you are as you are writing and has sort of any of your work in film influenced the way that you write yeah um that such um има няколко филма направени по мои истории. А, два от тях са така, физика на тегата по романа физика на тегата, анимация на Теодорушев, която стигна до краткия списък, до дългия списък на на Грайте Оскар. So there have been several films that have been made based on uh, on my work, uh, my second novel The Physics of Sorrow, uh, a Bulgarian Canadian filmmaker Teodor Ushev, uh, made it's called Blind Vaisha, great film, an animated film on a part of that that made it to the long list of the Oscars. A Blind Vaisha беше разказ за който стигна до до финалите всъщност. А, до the finals, yeah. Yeah. И а с две думи ще кажа за този за Blind Vaisha. So just let me say a few words about Blind Vaisha. Защото описва по някакъв начин начина по който разказвам разказите си и киното в тях. Because it, it sort of illustrates the way that I, I write my stories, but also the, the, the cinematography in them. Това беше разказ за една жена, която вижда с лявото си око само в миналото, а с дясното в бъдещето. So it's a story about a woman who sees with her left eye the past and with her right eye the future. И всъщност е сляпа за настоящето. But she's blind to the present. А... Понякога вижда началото на света с лявото си око, понякога вижда втората световна война, времето ни прекъснато семестие. So sometimes she sees the beginning of the world with her left eye, sometimes it's the second world, a world war, the time is constantly changing. Uh, и написах този разказ в едната си час разделен на две, за това какво вижда в ляво и какво вижда в дясно. So I wrote this story in one point where the story itself is divided in half, what she sees with her left eye, what she sees with her right eye. И... Теодор Ушев направи много хубаво, го предаде това през екрана, тази визуализация. И Теодор Ушев did a really terrific visualization of that for the screen. Така че до някъде времеобежище всъщност е продължение на този разказ. So in some sense, Time Shelter is a continuation of that story. Защото, защото е за това как гледаме с различни очи към миналото и към бъдещето. Because it also talks about how we look with different eyes toward the past and the future. Uh, и да, мисля, че докато пиша, си представя много ясно, uh, виждам сцените на това, което пиша. Yeah, I I'm writing, I do visualize very clearly the scene, whatever I'm writing. Uh, това е носи, едно сега да си представим тук какво е било на мястото на това кино. С ляво толко, преди 100 години. So it's like if I were here in this, in this theater, I would be imagining what it was like 100 years ago with my left eye. И какво ще бъде след 100 години с дясното око? And what is going to be like 100 years from now with my right eye? За град като Лондон това е лесно, защото имаме архив, имаме описание. And that's pretty easy for a city like London because we have an archive. Но за някои български места не е толкова лесно. But for some places in Bulgaria it's not quite that simple. <laughs> така че мисля, че част от успеха на книгата точно в UK, в uh, тук, е и за това, че 
тук има много пластове на история. So I think part of the success of the book here, Time Shelter in the UK, is because there are all these layers of history here. И специално отношение към миналото. And a very particular attitude towards the past. Um, I wondered if you could talk, I mean, a lot of your work is concerned with time and memory. Could you talk a little about the ways in which um, you can talk about time and memory in prose versus film? And do you think one medium works better for certain things and the other works for other things? Аз, понеже съм от страната на литературата все пак, мисля, че литературата има най-големи възможности да работи с миналото и с бъдещето. Well, because I'm from team literature, I think that literature has the, the, the best, uh, the strongest possibilities to work with, uh, what was it, with the, the past and with time. Uh, литературата от преди киното все пак. Literature uh, was, was invented before film, after all. Uh, и някакси... Наистина вярвам, че е, една дума може веднага да събуди спомен, да те транспортира някъде в. And I truly believe that a single word can awake a memory and to transport you somewhere. Нали знаете, че миризмите са много важни за паметта. You've all heard, right, that, that smells, scents are very important for memory. То когато опишем една миризма, да речем сега ви кажем миризма на препечени филийки, които са стояли по-дълго в тостера. Самото описание също отключва стай в паметта. So when we describe a scent, for example, the scent of toast that has been in the toaster for quite some time, we're unlocking that memory with those words. А, или миризмата на печени чушки за всеки българин. Or the scent of roasted peppers for every Bulgarian. <laughs> Думите наистина са контейнери на, на памет и, и, те, и те по-лесно пренасят от, от филмите. Моята докторска дисертация е върху киното и литературата. Actually, my PhD dissertation is about cinema and literature. <laughs> През 1930-те и 40-те години. На това, In the 1930s на and 40s. И там ясно се вижда как киното се учи от литературата and, и от театъра. And there you can clearly see how film is learning from literature and from theater. Brilliant. Well, team literature, but we are here to see a <laughs> film as well. Yeah. So let me ask a, a, a question related to the film. So um, as, as everyone will see, it, its protagonist is a translator. And Angela, I wondered if you could talk um, about one thing that you wish everybody knew about literary translators or one thing that you always think people misunderstand or get wrong about what you do. Well, I think maybe people think it's more glamorous than it is, but we just we really are just home in our pajamas all the time. <laughs> no, no, I think um I think it you know, it it's much more than just the words like Yorgi was saying. It's so much more there's so much about the social context and so you really do have to go out and talk to people and find sources and you can't just be sitting at home with your, you know, Google and your in your dictionary and I think maybe that's what will save us from DeepL and ChatGPT that you know there'll be there'll be need for still human beings that can really go out and find the context and and put that, you know, put that inside the text itself. Was there anything in translating this that came up that you needed more context around that was sort of a real puzzle to you? Or? Oh, 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 yeah. All of Bulgarian history. I mean, it, it was the socialist period. It was the Bulgarian renaissance in the 19th century. There were so many realia. And not just Bulgaria. I mean, then the, the final section that's, you know, it's all over Europe. It's... um. And and Georgi and I we really worked together because we didn't want it to be like a textbook, you know, where there was a you know a footnote on every other page, you know, with some droning thing about Bulgarian history. So we tried to slip things in, we tried to leave things mysterious, we sort of tried to have a balance between keeping keeping a bit of um the flavor of Bulgarian and not spoon feeding everything, but also not getting to the point where it would be so confusing so as to discourage the reader. Um I, I hope we struck that balance. Definitely, definitely. Right, I think we've got time for one or two audience questions. There's a hand there, so if you can just wait for a roving microphone to get to you. Sort of fourth row. Uh, thank you very much. Th this is uh, 
Really great to be here. First, congratulations on an amazing book that I bought, but I haven't read yet. Uh, Khalid Ali, I'm a reader in geriatrics and a dementia specialist from Brighton and Sussex Medical School. I, I'm interested in um, the approach of uh, revisiting the past. It's a uh, recognized approach called reminiscence therapy. When we uh, engage with older people, specifically people with dementia, to revisit the happy memories in the past through uh, creative media like uh, music, poetry, literature, and so forth. But while doing so, we, in a way, we are denying or not acknowledging the current identity and revisiting happy memories in the past. But in the time clinics that you refer to in the book, the past is not all rosy and nostalgic and happy. There are traumatic memories in that. So how, I was wondering how you navigated the the difference or the dichotomy between the past with its traumatic alongside the happy memories. Thank you. Да, всъщност героите разсъждават точно върху вашия въпрос на едно място в романа. Actually, the characters in the novel uh, discuss this is exactly your question at one point in the novel. Знаете ли какъв е един от реалните проблеми днес с възстановяването на паметта с щастливата памет. So I'm not sure if you know that one of the problems today with with the sort of re- recreating these happy memories. Представете си хора, които са преживели втората световна война, концлагерите, Аушвиц. Just imagine if people that experienced the second world war, the concentration camps, Auschwitz. Те са били млади тогава. They were young then. И сега когато губят паметта си, те се връщат назад към това време. And, and вътрешното им време е, и вътрешните им спомени ги връщат отново точно в тези години. And they were young then and so now that they're old they're losing their memory and their, their, their memories are taking them back to that time. И те изпитват страхотен, голям страх от това да влязат в uh, банята, да речем, защото банята им напомня друга баня в лагерите. Изпитват страх от стъпките на медицинските сестри по коридорите. Това са реални травми. And they experience terrible fear uh, from showers uh, because it takes them back to a different memory of showers or the, the footsteps of the nurses in, in the hallway that also evokes fear. От самите лекари. Uh, doctors themselves are very frightening. И, и върху това в момента се мисли. Това е сериозен, това е реален проблем в домовете за хора с Алцхаймер. And this is an actual real problem in, in um, care homes for people with, with Alzheimer's. Така че въпросът е трябва ли да преченяваме на тези хора второ връщане на травматична памет, на травматичните им спомени. So the question is, should we really cause that trauma, it, it force people to return to those traumatic memories? Дали, дали забравата не е по-лечебна в случая. In those cases, wouldn't oblivion be more therapeutic? Uh, дали понякога може и, може и така да се помисли от друг ъгъл, че самата амнезия е някакъв вид uh, анестезия за човек. So we can look at it from a different angle that, that amnesia is a kind of anesthesia for those people. Uh, изобщо това е тема, която все повече ще засяга обществото. Това е наистина социално важна тема. And this is a, a topic that is, is engaging society more and more. It's, it's an important social topic. Защото ние искаме и вече можем да живеем по-дълго, но това има цена. Because we can and, and, and will live longer, but that has its price. И, и това ще бъде нещо, върху което ще се говори. And, and we'll have to continue having this conversation. Thank you for that. Thank you for your question. Um, we can squeeze one more in, so just in the second row here. Здравейте. <laughs> Hi, Georgi and Angela. First of all, huge congratulations again for this amazing, amazing achievement. Um, touching upon traumas, I think that's really interesting. Um, over the past few months and years, uh, we all know that people have been in experiencing very diff- you know, difficult situations, cost of living cr- uh, crisis, um, Brexit, the war in Ukraine, you mentioned quite a few of those. And as fellow Bulgarians, we both know that we've been in crisis all our lives, as you recently said. Um, you, uh, you have been writing so beautifully about those crises, those deficits of humanity and uh, empathy and memory. 
And I think that's just really amazing how you take something like a trauma, like a, like a crisis, and turn it into something so beautiful. My question to you is quite personal. What keeps you going and what keeps you writing? Me, myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, това, това, което вярвам наистина е, че разказването на истории за травмата и за тъгата ги опитомяват по някакъв начин. What I truly believe is that writing stories about trauma uh, tames them in some way. В моето писане предпочитам да залагам на утешението. In my writing I, I like to emphasize consolation. Повече отколкото на това да, как да кажа, да стъпча героя в кълта или да 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 покажа мрака сам. Rather than sort of trample the the character in the mud and 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 um да покажа мрака. Yeah, just the, all the, the show only the darkness. Uh, жара на утешението, знаеш, е много стар жанр. Сенека има прекрасен текст за утешението на майка ми Хелвия. On consolation mm-hmm. of my mother Хелвия. Yes, uh, the, con- the genre of consolation is a very old genre. Сенека has a, has a text for his mother. Uh, и, и мисля, че да, това може да прави литературата. Да, тя може няколко прости неща. Uh, And I think that's what literature can do. It can do several simple things. Първото го знаем от Шехерезада и това е да отлага края. First, we know from Шехерезад it can stave off the end. <laughs> Разказваш история на вечер и печелиш още един ден. И печелиш още един ден. So you tell the story one night and you earn an- another day and another day. При получаването на наградата казах, че винаги съм вземал книги написани в първо лице от библиотеката, когато бях малък. И това не беше случайно, просто не исках героя да умира накрая. Докато разказваш историята си, си жив. So while you tell stories, you're still alive. Uh, ако ти нямаш достатъчно травми, разказваш историите на други хора с травми. Но това е, uh, да, това е някаква стори терапия, която, която помага, може би. But it's a type of story therapy that, that helps, perhaps it helps. Или понеже ние идваме от култура, която има много премълчание, натрупани травми, неизговорени травми. Много е трудно да разказваш за неразказани травми, за неслучили се неща. Но това е страхотен ресурс, страхотен, страхотни залежи на истории има тук. И в този смисъл, поради това нещастие, ние сме щастливи писатели. Thank you very much for your question. Um, that is all that we have time for, I'm afraid. If you haven't had a chance to buy a book yet, you can do so um, in the lobby. Thank you very much to Georgie and Angela for their time and congratulations again to both of you. Um, thank you all for coming. We're going to watch um, a clip of Toby Stevens reading from Time Shelter before we head into one fine morning. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.